Hello friends. In this video, I shall talk about stroke in children. It is also referred to as acute neurological syndrome or brain attack. In corollary with heart attack, the term used for cardiac arrest. This video is largely based on the latest American Heart Association and American Stroke Association guidelines given in the year 2019. So what is stroke? It is an acute onset focal neurological deficit of cerebrovascular origin and any acute onset focal neurological deficit in a child should be considered as stroke unless and until proven otherwise. So this is a complex diagram of the arterial supply of brain. What we must remember, this is the circle of villus, what we must remember is that the anterior circulation is by the internal carotid artery and the posterior circulation is by the vertebrobasilar artery systems. To simplify it further, there are three main large arteries supplying the brain, anterior cerebral artery shown in yellow, the middle cerebral artery shown in red and the posterior cerebral artery shown in blue. Similarly, the brain has two venous drainage systems, a superficial and a deep. The main part of the superficial drainage system of the brain is superior sagittal sinus and of the deep venous system is the transverse sinus which continues as sigmoid sinus which further continues as the internal jugular vein. Now the AHA ASA has classified stroke on the basis of two criteria. First is the age and second is the etiopathogenesis. So as per the age, it can be a perinatal stroke extending from 28 weeks of gestation to 28 days of life or it can be a childhood stroke from more than 28 days of life to 18 years of life. Etiopathologically, it can be an ischemic stroke which can further be an arterial ischemic stroke or a venous ischemic stroke which is known as cerebral synovenous thrombosis or it can be a hemorrhagic stroke. The risk factors for childhood stroke are umpteen. But the common ones are arteriopathy, for example, the transient cerebral arteriopathy, then post varicella arteriopathy, various vasculitis, and moya moya disease or syndrome. Then cardiac causes, for example, complex congenital heart disease, cardiac surgeries, and arrhythmias, the commonly encountered ones. The hematological causes, for example, sickle cell anemia, iron deficiency anemia, and inherited and acquired pro-thrombotic states. So if we see the clinical features of childhood stroke, we find that hemiparesis and hemifacial weakness are found to the extent of 90%, speech and language disturbance up to 50% of cases, vision disturbances in around 20% of cases and ATACs in 15 to 18% of cases of childhood stroke. Now non-contrast CT head, it is the initial screening investigation of choice and it can differentiate hemorrhage for up to at least five days. A normal scan excludes only a hemorrhage. It does not confirm there is an ischemia. But in the absence of an alternative, we may assume if the child has typical clinical features of stroke, we may assume that the child is suffering from infarction or ischemia. Now, there is no optimal time to image the patients with stroke with CT because Many infarcts do not become visibly hypodense until hours or even day after the stroke. It is only by 2 to 3 months that the infarct usually becomes shrunken and mature and of the CSF density to become more readily visible. And by 7 to 10 days, small hemorrhages, they become indistinguishable from infarcts. So actually there is no optimal time to stroke, to image the stroke patients. Rather the best time is as early as possible. Now here is a diagram showing the MCA territory ischemic infarct. Now how do you differentiate? An ischemic infarct appears as a hypo intense lesion in the region of a vascular territory along with some kind of edema. On the other hand the hemorrhagic stroke appears as a hyper intense circumscribed space occupying lesion. So this is how you differentiate an ischemia and infarct on CT scan. To evaluate one must go for MRI brain with MR angiography or MR venography. 
This is the investigation of choice. NCCT is only the initial screening investigation, whereas MRI brain with MRA or MRV as clinically suspected. This is the definitive investigation of choice. Then, a child should also go transthoracic echocardiography along with screening for arrhythmia by ECG monitoring unless and until a non-cardiac cause is proven. An extracranial vessel imaging might be required to rule out dissection or pseudoaneurysm. Lumbar puncture is done in patients with focal cerebral arteriopathy in whom you may require to send you may be required to send PCR or antibodies for herpes simplex virus or varicella zoster virus which are common causes of stroke. Thrombophilia screening is required in all but especially in those patients in whom no identifiable cause has been found. A screening for sickle cell disease can be done and a genetic testing is done only and only if there is no identifiable causes. Genetic causes are for example cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy, subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy and the FACES syndrome. To manage there are two kinds of therapies. First is the supportive therapy and second is the definitive therapy. Supportive therapy comprises of management of hyperhypoglycemia, hyperhypothermia, hypotension because we know that cerebral perfusion pressure it is given by the formula MAP minus ICP. So we need to maintain mean arterial pressure in order to continue the cerebral perfusion pressure to be normal in order to maintain the perfusion of the brain. One must also manage oxygenation, seizure control and management of raised ICP. Definitive therapies, now you hear there is something to understand for you people. There are three kinds of definitive therapies. The first is the hyperacute stroke therapies. This includes tissue plasminogen activator, thrombectomy etc. But AHA, ASA strongly recommends that this needs to be done only and only. Actually the role is controversial in children. But if it all required, it should be done only in three conditions. First is the persistent disabling deficits when, a, when we are already losing the child as a functional outcome. A large artery occlusion. Large artery means ACA, MCA or PCA or ICA. Internal carotid artery. And larger children in whom the veins are large for catheterization. The second kind of definitive therapies are antithrombotic therapies. These include antiplatelet agents like aspirin and anticoagulants like low molecular weight and unfractionated heparin. There are majorly two indications. First is arterial stroke patients who are at risk for recurrence and second is CSVT patients that is venous stroke patients. So in those who are the patients who are at risk for recurrence of arterial ischemic stroke, first is the cardiac causes and second is the thrombophilic causes. And finally, there are surgical therapies which include ventricular drainage which however is reserved only for management of hydrocephalus which is secondary to intraventricular hemorrhage and decompressive craniectomy which is required in patients with malignant edema. Now what is malignant edema? Malignant edema is edema occurring in patients with large vessel occlusion. The one which we had already discussed ACA, MCA and PCA. Also, some disease specific management needs to be done. For example, if the underlying cause is sickle cell disease, then you need to keep hemoglobin S less than 30% by giving transfusion therapy. Rather, hydroxyurea therapy might also be required after one year of regular blood transfusion. Immunosuppressive therapy is required in vasculitis and revascularization surgery is required in Moya Moya disease. Now, sinovenous thrombosis is the other kind of stroke, that is the venous thrombosis. It presents as progressive headache, papilledema, diplopia and acute focal deficits. The modifiable risk factors include fever, infection, anemia and dehydration. Evaluation is by MR and CT venography for a definitive diagnosis. Supportive care includes IV fluids, oxygenation, head end elevation to 30 degrees and treatment of seizures and anticoagulation is the mainstay of treatment like we had discussed in the previous scene. And endovascular treatment thrombolysis or thrombectomy is done only and only when there is a very high risk of mortality or when there is sudden clinical deterioration.
and the last of all kinds of strokes are hemorrhagic stroke hemorrhagic stroke presents as instantaneous or the characteristic term used is thunder clap headache then loss of consciousness nuchal rigidity focal neurological deficits and seizures a screening ncct head is required as in every kind of stroke mr angiography is also required as a definitive investigation but only once the patient is stable to be shifted to mri the management of airway breathing control and supportive treatment is the mainstay of management of hemorrhagic stroke along with seizure control head and elevation to 30 degrees isotonic fluids normoglycemia normothermia vitamin k and fresh frozen plasma might also be required symptomatic hematomas can be evacuated in arteriovenous fistulas you require embolization followed by surgery for low grade aneurysms you might be requiring surgery while for high grade aneurysms radiation or surgery either may be required surgical resection of symptomatic or enlarging supratentorial or cerebellar cavernous malformations is also required now finally coming on to how you approach the patient clinically so any patient who comes to you with acute onset focal neurological deficit should be considered as stroke unless proven otherwise so what do you do you immediately go for ncct head they can either be a hemorrhage or in absence of hemorrhage if nothing is visible like ncct is normal but the patient is clinically highly suspicious of having stroke then you assume the patient has ischemia or infarction in either cases the confirmation is by mr angiography or venography a baseline echocardiogram and pta ptt inr is also a must in hemorrhagic stroke the mainstay of management is management of raised icp along with supportive treatment whereas in ischemia or infarction hyperacute therapies are controversial antithrombotic therapies are required for two indications first is the arterial ischemic stroke at risk of recurrence and these include patients with proven thrombophilias and cardioembolic causes and second is venous stroke or venous infarction along with management of the supportive care along with giving supportive care thank you for a patient listening and have a good day